Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Brown Bears Sports Report. My name is Scott Cordishi. Glad you could join us today. This afternoon, we're going to talk to the Brown men's and women's tennis programs. But before we do, let me tell you that today's program is brought to you in part by Elite Physical Therapy, the premier choice for physical therapy in Rhode Island. Elite Physical Therapy is staffed by a team of highly trained and talented physical therapists that specialize in treating back and neck pain, sports injuries, and surgical rehabilitation. It is your choice. We're to go. Well, as I mentioned, the Brown men's and women's tennis programs are with us today. And first things first, let's say hello to the head coach of the men's tennis program here at Brown, Tim Gray. Tim, how are you? I'm doing well, Scott. Thanks for having us. Well, Tim, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you over the next few minutes. And also your counterpart, the head coach for the women's tennis program here at Brown, Lucy Schmidhauser. Lucy, how are you? Great, Scott. Thanks for having us. Lucy, Very thank excited. you for joining us. And you both brought with you a couple of your student athletes for the men's team. Senior Peter Litsky is with us. Peter, how are you doing? Oh, did we lose Peter? All right, we'll see if we can't reconnect with Peter, but we do have Rob Sinekobert, sophomore with us in the men's tennis program. Rob, how are you doing? Pretty good, just trying to hang in there, stay busy throughout this quarantine. Um, stay in shape and try to get out on the court as soon as possible. Well, it's great to see you, Rob, and we'll be talking more with you in just a moment from the women's tennis team. Devin Jack Sr. is with us. Devin, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Happy to be on. Great. Thanks for joining us. I understand you haven't made your way back home to California yet. You're still here in Providence, right? I am. I am, but hopefully going home in a few days. I have a final next week, so I'm trying to be home for that. All right. And uh, Julia Newman, sophomore from the women's tennis team, is with us as well. Julia, how are you today? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, thank you all for joining us. Tim, we'll bring it back to you and start with you. Um, you know, obviously your spring season was cut short, but uh, just before the season came to an end, you guys had a couple of nice wins against Boston College and a road win at Michigan State. Yeah, we, uh, we were really pretty excited about uh, how things were kind of falling into place this spring and uh, we're very excited to get started in Ivy League play and it's always great uh, you know to pick up uh, Power Five conference wins and um, you know a lot of guys playing really well and training hard so uh, we were supremely disappointed uh, that the, the season was cut short but um, we got a lot, lot to be excited about for the, uh, for the future. And, uh, you know, one of the players that was playing well for you, Coach, was sophomore Rob Sinekovic. Uh, I know he played a lot as a freshman, had some injury issues in the fall, but was really starting to come into shape playing some good doubles tennis for you and was about to hit the ground running in singles for you as well. Yeah, yeah. Rob had, had been playing some good tennis and uh, just a few little nagging injuries that he had in the fall. And, but he was really coming on, had, I believe they had a match point when we were playing uh, at, at Michigan, who was three in the country. So um, we, were, we were excited to see where, where he was going to go with his tennis. And of course, Peter Litsky, I think, was 10 and one in the spring and on a maybe an eight match winning streak. Is that right, Pete? I think Pete, uh, for some reason, I think we lost Pete, but that is correct. He was 10 and one this spring. So he was playing really well for you, coach. Yeah. 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 He was, uh, you know, we really feel like we were uh, starting to peak at the right time, just as, as we were uh, getting to roll into Ivy play. And uh, Lucy, uh, for your team, same thing. Just before the break, you guys had a couple of nice wins against St. John's and UMass before things came to a screeching halt. Yes. We, we were excited as well about, our improvement as a team and we were getting excited to uh, kind of go into the Ivy season. Um, we all felt like everyone on the team was making uh, a lot of progress. So we, uh, we were disappointed not to find out what, what would have happened during the season or during the Ivy season. So Devin, talk to us a little bit about your thoughts when you found out that everything, you know, was uh, canceled and postponed for the rest of the year. You, you got your play in in the fall. You guys got about half the spring season in and you were playing very well. And then all of a sudden you learn that it's all over with. What were your initial thoughts when you heard the news? Um, I think the right word is heartbreak. Uh, it was so heartbreaking to find out that 
everything that we had been working towards uh, had to come to an end and that the end had to be so abrupt and kind of without notice. And uh, Lucy did a really great job with communicating with us, I think, uh, about, um, you know, how proud she was of us and uh, the uh, way that our team had come together this season, especially. And I think that this was probably my favorite not probably it was for sure my favorite season that I've had uh, all four years. So heartbreak for sure. But I think when I first found out, I was crying a lot and a lot of sadness that I shared with my team. But I think that we quickly realized that it's not a situation that just pertains to us. It doesn't just pertain to other uh, spring sports either. It's a worldwide and um, really scary thing. So you know, what, what needed to be done needed to be done. And I, I told the team and my coaches uh, at our like senior dinner that we had a couple of days after we found out that as much as it sucks and as sad as it is, it'll be a great story to tell our healthy children um, years from now. So it, it was really, really sad and heartbreaking, but um, I'm sure that, you know, it will all come out healthy and happy after. And Devin, you know, you really had a terrific career here at Brown. You finish your career even without playing those final 11, 12 matches, whatever the number was, uh, 16th all-time in singles victories here at Brown and 17th all-time in doubles wins. So you have to be proud of what you accomplished in your time here at Brown on the women's tennis team. I definitely am. I don't regret for a second coming here or, um, you know, any match I've had. I think that it's all about progress. And um, I didn't know about those numbers, but that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, regardless of that, I think um, my time here has been like the most special four years because of the team and because I was able to compete. Julia, how about you, um, a sophomore from nearby Natick, Massachusetts? First of all, you're just outside the city of Boston, which I know has been one of the hot spots with this pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope that you and your family are all doing well. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's it's been crazy around here with the whole quarantine. And I know that actually coming this Wednesday, we actually all have to wear masks outside at all times. So even when working out, so that's going to be an interesting experiment. But um, I, it's been good. I mean, everyone, I'm hoping for the best over here, hoping that it gets better. Um, but I do think, like Devin said, I think it was uh, the best thing to do. I, like it was as sad as it was to end our season. I do think it's for the best of everyone, not just for us, but globally. Um, but yeah, keep hanging in there, hanging in there. 11 singles wins for you, nine doubles wins. Um, just tell me about how your season was going individually. Oh, it was going well, I think. Yeah, I think that from, I had a lot of growth, I think from freshman year. Um, I think one of the highlights for me this year was when we went to UT and we were able to play the University of Texas. Um, I was an amazing experience because Lucy, of course, is an alum um, and a very famous alum, shall I say. <laughs> um, but we had such a great time just as a team, but also I was able to play, I mean, we all were able to play some of the top, top uh, women uh, in college tennis. And it was an unbelievable experience. And I had, I think, one of my best matches, singles matches and doubles, actually. Um, at that particular uh, event and it was so much fun and the atmosphere was crazy I mean we were on TV um, and having my whole team there to support me I was the last match on so it was it was great it was electric <laughs> nice Lucy uh, for you a two-time All-American at Texas now that uh, Julia brings it up and, and recently in the last few years you were inducted into their uh, Women's Athletic Hall of Honor so uh, that had to be a special moment for you it, it was, it definitely was, you know, the, the, the best part of the whole trip was being able to share it with, with the team. Um, we, we got to have the tour of the, uh, the, the hall of hall of fame facility or hall of honor facility. And, and it, it was so great to see how excited the girls were and how supportive they were. Um, and it, 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 it was just great. What an awesome experience. And, um, we, uh, I, I think I, um, as Julia said, I mean, Julia had, you know, amazing season, just, just her growth uh, as a person and as a player from her freshman year to her sophomore year uh, has been incredible. And she definitely, you know, the Texas match, that was a highlight for her. Um, and she just continued getting better after that. Um, 
and then same, I don't know if this is the time to be bragging about Devin, but Devin definitely, she's, she's been such a great uh, team leader for our team. She's, she's been the only senior this year, but um, she's just, she's, she's shown so much growth um, personally and as a tennis player. So um, I would say, like Devin was saying, you know, this was her favorite year. Um, I mean, I haven't been in college coaching for that long, but definitely um, this year has been very special. So we've, uh, we all were really sad when it came to an abrupt end. Rob, um, tell us what your feelings were when you learned that it was over with. Um, you heard Coach say that you were just starting to play really well, and he was excited for what was to come this spring from you individually. What was your reaction when you found out that the season was over with? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty shocking, um, echoing every, everything that everyone else has said so far. Um, I mean, for me personally, uh, I was getting off to a really good start in the spring, um, starting to feel healthy again, playing some really good doubles. And I think that one of the highlights was that match against Michigan for me. Um, but yeah, definitely also starting to see some more opportunities and singles there. Um, so personally, it was, it was tough to, to lose the season, but I think, you know, considering the seniors a lot more than myself, uh, that was a really difficult moment for all of us when we found out in practice. Um, I just remember, you know, trying to embrace the seniors and, and celebrate the season that we had with them. Okay, I think- uh, uh, I think, I think I we think have Peter back. We yeah, do, can, and can I'm you... gonna take it to him right now. I'm glad you said that, Coach. Uh, so, Peter, we'll, we've got you back. You were a captain for this year's team. First of all, um, tell me what that meant to you when you were named captain. Um, I think it meant a lot because I think the most of what I got out of my experience being on the team at Brown was the difference between being an individual athlete uh, that I had in tennis and being a junior tennis player versus being on a team, which is something I hadn't experienced with, um, until I came to Brown. So being able to use what I'd learned from that to help mentor the younger guys and help, you know, usher in the next set of Brown tennis players and help them achieve something special. I think that was what was so important to me about it. Peter, you uh, really had a fantastic year. 15 and five, those 15 singles wins were the most on the team. You were 12 and eight in doubles. Uh, and you played number one singles as a junior this year. I know you bounced around between one, two, and three. But as Coach mentioned, you were really hot before things came to a halt. Uh, Ten and one in your last 11 singles matches. So uh, you had to be feeling it a little bit, I guess, right? Yes, yeah. It was um... – I know it was obviously a sad end to the season, but you know it was nice to take one silver lining from it that I ended on a on a hot streak. I'm curious to know, Peter, with you, and then Devin will ask you as well. You're both seniors, um, so what comes next for the two of you after graduation? Do you have jobs lined up? Do you have plans? Um, what exactly comes next for you, Peter? I have a I have a job lined up in Boston that's supposed to start in August, but tentatively I think right now I'm not sure if it's going to be remote or not so I'm still working out that trying to figure out if it's safe yet that sort of thing. What was your concentration at Brown and if you don't mind my asking who will you be working for this summer? Um, it's a management consulting firm called Cartesian up in Boston and um, I'm an economics concentrator not computer science as you guys can tell. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Devin, uh, same question to you, Devin. What's your concentration at Brown and what are your plans after graduation? So I studied psych and after I graduate, I am working in management consulting for PricewaterhouseCoopers in New York City. And like Peter, I'm supposed to start in October, but uh, we find out at the end of May uh, when the new start date is going to be, which is possibly around January. So I'd pro I'm from LA, so I'll probably stay in LA until um, I move to New York. So a lot of time to uh, hang out with the family and support, you know, the Rams football and stuff like that <laughs> until I start. Julia, how about you? Um, just out of curiosity, you're a sophomore. Any plans for the summer in terms of internships, jobs, playing tennis? What are your summer plans right now? Yeah, so right now I was going to, I had an internship um, in the city at a law firm that I was very excited about. 
Um, as of now, they've pushed back the start date to June 1st, but I'm thinking that's pretty hopeful of them. Um, so I will see if that happens. Um, but if not, I mean, I'm just gonna try and stay active. I'll try and get some other job if I can. Um, but in past years, I've worked at a um, country club teaching tennis um, to like little kids and older people and just did that all summer. But also I'm not sure if a camp is gonna be happening uh, this summer. So we'll have to see where it goes, but fingers crossed for the internship for sure. But. Well, good, good luck to you, Rob. How about you? I know you're located in uh, central Jersey, just outside of Princeton, as a matter of fact. Do you have any summer plans? Um, as of now, a lot's up in the air for me. Um, I think that most likely I'll be doing some type of a virtual internship, um, possibly for half of the summer, and the rest is still undecided. Uh, Actually, I'm considering moving back into Providence because we, we have an off-campus lease starting in June. Um, so I might move back there, uh, hopefully get some more tennis in before the fall. That'd be great. And Tim, tell us how you are preparing as a coaching staff for the fall. First of all, what's your communication like with the team at this point in time? And then in terms of planning for the fall, there's so much uncertainty surrounding whether or not there'll be a season, if it starts on time, if it'll be abbreviated, move to the spring. We've all heard so many different scenarios. What are you doing to prepare for the fall? That's a great question. Um, you know, I, we, we as a team, we're having regular uh, Zoom, Zoom meetings and, you know, trying to uh, keep the guys engaged uh, with, you know, discussions about workouts and, uh, you know, trying to find ways to get creative with, with team workouts and whatnot uh, as, as individuals. Um, so that's, that's been great. Uh, it's been great to keep these guys involved and engaged. As far as the, the fall looks like, I think, you know, I, I think we're all sort of proceeding as though the fall will happen. Uh, I think that's the best way to proceed is, is let's assume it's going to happen. I think um, it's going to look very different than any other fall has ever looked before. But I think um, just for our own mental health, we want to, you know, hope and believe that, that, that the students are going to return and um, things will uh, proceed in the new normal, whatever that may look like. But I, I think we, we all desperately want to come back in the fall, but I think, uh, you know, I, I feel I'm, I'm thrilled with how Christina Paxson has kept, you know, every Brown employee and student in the loop. And, and of course, uh, she wants the, the students to return, but I think it's just going to be a matter of whether or not it's safe to do so. And, and uh, so I trust that uh, the decision makers will, will do the right thing and uh, fingers crossed that we can all get back to the fall. I, I think the fall is gonna be very much a regional. Uh, if we do come back, uh, lots of regional play, I think there's gonna be little to no out of state travel. Um, and I think we're just gonna have to navigate it uh, as, as best and as safely as we can navigate it. Um, that's my hope anyway. Lucy, how about you? How are you and your staff uh, adjusting to the new norm, as uh, Tim puts it, uh, in terms of recruiting, in terms of communication with your team and the like? Uh, how have you been dealing with this new norm that we're living through? Um, so regarding the team, we've been having regular um, twice weekly uh, Zoom meetings, which uh, at least for me has been the highlight of my week <laughs> every week and getting to see their lovely faces. Um, so I've actually really enjoyed spending the time with, uh, with the team. Uh, we've done a lot of great team building exercises, really kind of uh, dissected different relationships um, that you know, we've been continuously talking about in regards to uh, each other, the team, um, relationships with the, uh, the players to the coaches. So that has been really um kind of beneficial i feel like and then um in terms of the fall you know i think the one big lesson that we're learning from this is you can only control the things that you can control um and then everything else you know whether we come back and when we come back and what happens with competition and, and training uh, or, or, or uh, getting back on campus that really you know we, we will have to see um, 
we have to make sure that it's safe for everyone. Um, I think that's, that's definitely the number one priority. Um, in regards to recruiting, um, we've uh, had to get very creative when it comes to um, doing Zoom uh, visits into our recruits' homes and talking, talking to the recruits on, on Zoom and their parents. Um, um, so it's, it's, it's been different, but um, it's, it's very interesting seeing kind of the other side of it too. Um, we've had some recruits who have gotten very creative with uh, just kind of getting our attention. Um, so kind of getting to know them a little bit better. Um, I've, had, I've had recruits send me uh, videos from plays that they have done or artwork. And so um, it's, been, it, it's been great. Um, so my, my assistant Stephanie and I, um, we've, been, we've been engaged a lot in the recruiting process. And so we, we feel good about um, you know, moving forward. And right now we're in recruiting class of 2021 and that's going well. Great. Yeah. Peter, how about you? Are you at your home in St. Petersburg, Florida at the moment? Yeah, I'm, I'm home right now. All right. And so what are you going to miss most about, uh, about Brown or being on campus? Um, I think by far the thing, the thing I'll miss most is just having that team culture, that camaraderie that we had every day. We were a pretty tight knit group of guys. So we spent a lot of time together, whether it's a lot of us took the same classes, went to the same practice every day, ate together. A lot of us lived together too. So just I don't know, having that group team experience every day, that's probably what I'll miss most. Devin, how about you? I know you're still in Providence, but uh, campus is somewhat of a ghost town right now. But what are you going to miss most uh, when you head back to California and leave Brown? I'll definitely miss uh, the people, my friends here, but um, my teammates, they're definitely my sisters. And seeing them every day, like Peter said, it's, it's tough to go from 100 to zero. But I know that we'll always keep in touch and have a lot of Zoom calls and stuff like that. But, but like seeing like Julia's smiling face every day, is, is, it's sad not to have that you know, as often anymore. But um, like the whole, the whole team, the coaches, the girls, everything. Well, if you're in New York, you can always go visit the Bears when they visit Columbia, and you can get up to Rhode Island. It's only a few hour For train sure. ride. For sure. Well, she will. <laughs> of course. Uh, and a final question, Rob, for you and for Julia. Rob, uh, you know, when you do get back to campus, whether you do come back this summer, I mean, what's, what's one of the first places you're going to visit? Uh, probably Chinatown on there, to be honest with you. But <laughs> after, I, after I visit that, um, definitely the tennis courts. Uh, like I said, I'm hoping to move in at some point earlier this summer um, just to kind of get things moving, return to some kind of normalcy, um, maybe do my virtual work from there. Um, and one of my roommates as well, he's, he's considering to move in with me so we can start practicing and uh, fingers crossed that we'll have a fall season. Um, yeah, just prepare the best that we can. And Julia, last question for you, remote learning. How have you found it? Have you enjoyed it? Has it gone well? Would you much prefer to be in the classroom with your fellow classmates? How's it go? So it's been going surprisingly well, I would say. I haven't had many glitches in class, which I was surprised about. Um, but I do definitely miss being in person and in class. I would way rather be with people. I mean, I love to talk. It's way easier to work with study groups, for example. Like I know me and my teammates, after practice, after showers, we would go meet up in the science library, fourth floor. We would just hang out there and study. And it just, it was way more fun, I think. But um, it's gone much better than I anticipated. And a lot of that is props to the professors and Brown as well for facilitating that for all of us. Um, but I'm very, very excited to get back to campus at some point. Well, hopefully we'll all be back there in the fall. As we wrap things up, Coach, I don't know, do you want to say a few words, Coach Gray, maybe about Peter? Um, uh, obviously, he's played his final tennis match as a brown bear. What would you like to say to Peter? Well, you know, I think uh, when we, uh, we got the call that the season was canceled, we'd actually just started practice on March 11th. And uh, I, I think everyone, it was, it was such a surreal moment. Uh, but Peter, Peter and Jacob and, and William Bader, uh, the three seniors are the guys that came in with me when I arrived at Brown. And, uh, you know, Peter is one of these young men that uh, has a special place in, in my heart. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. And, 
it wasn't always an easy road for Peter. Um, but what is so impressive is he's a young man that he never gave up and, uh, uh, and, you know, uh, ended up having the, the best season of his, his four year career, uh, his senior year. And, uh, I think we have a special friendship, uh, not just a, a player coach relationship and, uh, yeah, he's one of my all-time favorites. So, Pete, thanks for four great years. I'm sorry it ended the way it did. Thanks, Coach. Very, very well said, Coach Gray. And Coach Schmidhauser, same question to you. What would you like to say to Devin in your graduating senior class? Well, Tim made me cry now, so <laughs> hard to follow. Um, I mean, say, same thing with Devin. And I feel like um, our – relationship is way more than a player player coach relationship we've gotten so close over the last three years and um i feel like she is my my second daughter um but she's she's done a great job um like i said her leadership this year was invaluable and um it really showed at at uh, at our dinner at the end of the year where Pretty much every player on our team considers Devin her best friend, um, which is which was really great to see, and that that's the kind of leadership um, we want to uh, cultivate and develop at Brown. So um, she will be missed, but like you said, Scott, she won't be very far. So she will she will be coming up to Brown, cheering us on, and anytime we're in the city, she will be. I know she'll be um, one of our biggest fans. So it's not a goodbye. <laughs> to see you later. Honestly, I'm crying now. <laughs> Losing the best. Oh my God, of course I'm coming back. You can't get rid of me. <gasps> it's not goodbye. It's just farewell for now. Well, That's seniors, right. Peter, Devin, congratulations on your impending graduation. And thank you for your years of service to the tennis programs here at Brown. You've represented yourselves. You've represented your families. Brown Tennis, Brown Athletics, and Brown University very well. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, folks, that'll do it for this edition of the Brown Bears Sports Report with our men's and women's tennis program. My thank to Tim Gray, Lucy Schmidhauser, Peter Litsky, Rob Sinekovich, Devin Jack, and Julia Newman. My name is Scott Kredishi. Have a great day, everybody. This has been a presentation of Learfield IMG College.